Good evening and welcome to another scene in Darkness in Dublin. And this scene is a crossover. For one of the Fae is about to meet, well, one of the old, old, well, dead things to walk around. And, well, it's not that bad. Not tonight, hopefully. An invitation has gone out after a certain, well, exhibition was, well, in more ways than one, interrupted, let's say, or ended. There were certain actions that happened, and, well, it raised more than a couple of eyebrows. And one of those eyebrows, well, figuratively out eyebrows, that were raised was that of Theodore Williams, who has extended an invitation to a woman that was assaulted, no less. And set person has gotten an invitation to a small lounge, well, lounge restaurant. There's definitely tables where you can eat, but there's also a lounge area with leather seating, couches, and, you know, very relaxed atmosphere, and definitely the, um, not a cheap place to visit. And, unless there is other things, I do believe that we will start the scene when uh, this person will arrive. Yeah, Saoirse would arrive promptly. She has, you know, she always arrives on time, unless she decides to be fashionably late. Hmm. That has its perks, or usages, I suppose. Yeah, as you, as you arrive at the place, um, you're pretty much welcomed in, and um, there isn't a a waiter to show you to your table, per se, but this man, my overlay, will come over. Ah, madam. Saoirse? Saoirse, but yes. Saoirse. Oh, I apologize. Please, come this way. And, um, he will just... He will just walk over to a table. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, he will just... He produces a small, uh, wooden box that he places on the table. And, uh, he will just say, Please be seated. Um, Mr. Williams will be with you soon. She's going to eye the box, but then sit down rather cautiously. Hmm. And, yes, um, probably two or three minutes pass by, and out from back, um, from the back somewhere, uh, this person will walk in. You'll recognize him. And, uh, well recognize this face of his because you've seen him look somewhat different but he just comes in you you can see he talks with one of the barmen there's a bit of a laugh you can't really make out what it says it's just a small talk and uh, he will just nod and will just say ah ah good evening good evening very good to see you again uh, I'm truly sorry for keeping you waiting a certain <laughs> certain call on the phone please please Relax. Um, oh, this is for you. And uh, he will... I... I apologize if it is a bit... Mm, crass. Mm. And he will open the box, and it is a branch of an olive tree. He will just open it and push it over to you. Taking things in quite a literal sense now, aren't we? 
quite so. I just merely wanted to see if it was someone who appreciated a bit of uh, sentimentality. Before we get started, you should know I've got my liege's number on speed dial should anything happen. Well, that would be most unbecoming if anything happened to you. I don't think that well, would be necessary. Considering what happened the last time I was around oh, your kind. Oh, that's why we're here, but I'm... It was very incompetent on me to make sure that you were all right, and I still haven't talked to the person who did this to you, and honestly, for the life of me... <laughs> for the life of me. Hmm. Interesting. I cannot fathom what exactly ha went through that man's head, but... Well, firstly, let me apologize deeply. Maybe not on his behalf, but for the fact that it happened. The thought alone of any tarnishment to a such a magnificent creature such as yourself is quite troubling. Your flattery is sweet, but... And very free of charge. I have two demands from my liege that, unless honored, well... Your liege. Mm. I, of course, don't need to pry, but, well, I do believe the traditions are different, but there's this. We talking a liege and simply did you follow? Is it a person with a title? I am somewhat in the blind here. Out of character, technically, if she says it's someone that has title, would she be breaking the Ashit? <laughs> Once again, the Ashit the Masquerade pretty much only function as it pertains to ordinary mortal society. So okay. there is a certain degree of leeway on both sides to speak when you are not speaking with ordinary mortal society. Okay. He holds title, yes. Hmm. Fair enough. I have s a bit of experience with this. Of course, I'm not sure it's exactly the same it was. And he whispers a bit. When certain royal families held true power within the mortal <laughs> society, but I understand it is. It must be of a more, I hate to say futile sense, but a structure that is both political and in a sense of fealty? Yes. Hmm. Fair enough. I've sworn an oath to him. Ah. Very well. That will, that will suffice. I can work with that, and I do believe I have a better understanding of what the situation might be. But please, please, the bonds. He demands the death of the one who struck me. Noted. And... He demands whoever your leader is. Oh dear. Kiss his boot. Hmm. Well, that is an odd request. I consider myself a bit of an old-fashioned person, but... That is my leash for you. A sense of... Style. I will also offer it. To also offer a point of clarification here, his exact words were 
that the leader of the individual in question is mm. So in theory, Which, you could they don't have a gangrel primogen. I was going to say, in theory, you could knock that off to the gangrel primogen, but um, <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> Though I do believe his exact words were the leader of the person in question. Hmm. Oh, I have no idea how your society works, considering I didn't know you existed until about a week ago. Until my brother. One of you brother. punched me in the face. Well. And broke my nose. The person that attacked you. I'm sure you I'm noticed. Well. <laughs> that he looked somewhat normal compared to my brother. You mean that monstrous thing that was in my, my face brother. when I came to? My brother, yes. He is family. Hmm. Interesting. Normally, I would refrain from calling anyone else monsters, but... Well, there's many things I would... I mean, Shannon... It's entirely up to you if your character has seen movies. Like, very much in my particular my setting, movies do exist, so it's up to you if you've seen movies like Nosferatu or, you know, things like that that might actually, you know, give you some kind of groundwork for, oh, no, shit, vampires be ugly, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she, she does have, you know... Yeah. Well, Quite frankly, he reminded me of that... Oh, what was that old black and white movie? Nosferatu, that was it. You can tell, like, this person suddenly begins to fight to keep a laughter. A very, very loud laughter down. <laughs> well, yeah. oh. <laughs> she, she raises an eyebrow. Well, quite the word to describe it. <laughs> well, quite apt, I might say. But I do not believe that movie quite encapsulates some of us. But you're quite right. And I'm sorry to have to, well, be one of the persons to spring it on you, even though I was not the one to attack you. Well, that is... Again, I'm really terribly sorry that oh, this had to happen this way, but I have a certain, well, I have a way of getting in touch with my, my liege, I suppose you could say, the equivalent, probably not, but the person who would make decisions. No matter who we are, it seems there is always someone in charge. I suppose I will leave that up to you then. These are my liege's demands. I. But what of your demands? I honestly think that's a little bit more interesting. I have demanded my justice of my liege, and he has seen to it that it's been commanded. Hmm. Hmm. He cocks his head a little bit. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. And a bit sad. But... Oh, how so? I'm quite certain that you could come with up some, perhaps not overindulgent, but at least interesting, perhaps not demands, but questions, declarations, you would want to punch him back, or... Mm, that would be useless, I'm 
hardly skilled when it comes to combat. But you are skilled in very many other things. I'm quite sure. I prefer to let my words do the talking versus my fists. Of that I have very little doubt, my dear. Might I ask, now that we're here and having a fairly polite conversation without any reach for cell phones or numbers or backup, might I ask, what do you do for a living? Just out of curiosity. I'm a singer. Ah. What type? All types or specific interests? Mm. It varies. Uh, I performed backup vocals for a great many bands. Backup I'm vocals? I'm doing my own thing now which leans more towards classical music. You are truly heaven-sent, aren't you? Distractingly beautiful and a good taste in music. I have sung opera for, and he looks around again, over a century now. Mm. Quite interesting. I would love to hear you perform if this is at all possible. No, oh, gladly. Something good comes of this, after all. Actually, if they do have a stage, she has probably performed here in the past. Mm. As she does, you know, small shows throughout the city. Mm. But she also gives vocal lessons. Well, I suppose this isn't the best place to have a, <clears throat> I suppose verbal sparring wouldn't be the, vocal sparring, probably not the best place, but, well, I'm almost up for a challenge. <laughs> But such pleasantries, I'm afraid, must wait until war is avoided. Hopefully. Indeed. I really wish that we have met under better circumstances, but I've seen worse, and I'm quite sure it can be avoided. As long as my leisure's demands are met. I suppose it would be in very poor taste of me to set up a different meeting for the two of us to sing or practice together at this point, but... Hmm. I would dare say that I would wait. I know. I know. Well, it still is. I drift, I'm sorry. The, my profession gets the best of me most times. But it's good to hear that the arts are respected and in life and well in other aspects of our hmm, weirder aspects of society. Also, it comes across as a little shocking because she does have several tattoos that are visible. Mm. Mm. Some of them are quite large. He does, he does eye that, but he doesn't seem to comment on it. Well, not yet, anyway. Just uh, oh, see, here I am, so much, so much business. And can I offer you anything, my dear? Something to drink, eat? 
No, I'm quite all right. Are you sure? Very yes, well. I ate before I came. Wise, wise. Well. Hmm. Fascinating. I must say I know very, very little of your kind, but I suppose you know little, well, almost nothing about ours. Indeed. Though I'm sure, you know, Void Frost gave her a... Crash course? <laughs> this is a thing. Yes, it's... I must commend you. Stating with my kind that you are not alone, you have backup, and very bad things will happen to anyone who tries to cross you is probably a very wise thing to do with my kind. Honestly. Hmm. Yes, you see, my leash is quite possessive, so. Well, can you really blame him? Hardly. I have seen men give up other men's lives, their lives work for someone who looks like you before. And if one person has you as his, well, I could understand possessiveness. You are quite the flatterer, aren't you? Yes, I am. Ah, try to be. I suppose it is a... Well, I'm going to say too much, but my family is not... My type of person is not necessarily someone you see many of in my particular family. So I suppose it's just a matter of, well, when you are surrounded by people who do not give <laughs> flattery compliments in many ways and at any times, well, you will perhaps overcompensate, I suppose. I trust you don't mind. Of course not. Good. Besides, I am, as I said, significantly old school. I have been raised to compliment women. A product, a consequence of my time, I suppose. Well... Flattery is always appreciated, so. Well, you will have to give me a cue of some kind if I need to stop. Perhaps a flag or a sign, <laughs> stop, turn around, <laughs> full stop or something like that. I think we'll have to work on that next time. But, and he just uh, looks down. Uh, he's just looking at his phone. It's it's he it's not like under the table. It's on the table. He's just looking at something on his phone. You'll notice his hands are gloved. He closes the phone again and she says, "So, a poor singer being assaulted. My day." I understand that this can be somewhat personal, and I do apologize. Please, say if you do not wish to discuss it. But you did seem rather agitated, and had the situation been a bit different, I might have tried to grab you and calm you down, or attempted to. But what was it that... I mean, I felt 
a few things, but nothing that would make me panic. There was... <clears throat> would Void Frost have been able to deduce that it was Nightmare Chimera and told her what it was? Since she had absolutely no idea. Sure. It was something that affects our kind rather poorly. That I assume was trapped in that sarcophagus with whatever it was he took from it. Something when the sarcophagus was broken, it was released. Ah, that is unfortunate. I do believe that you might not have been able to see due to your state at the time, but one of the thieves, I suppose, did draw a blade and did approach you, to silence you, we assumed. I was about to calm you down, or try to, when you were punched. I think his method, well, his idea was to knock you unconscious, to spare your life, but... That clearly didn't work. No, it didn't. And probably one of the worst ways to do this... I mean, I would have thought holding a mouth of your... A hand over your mouth to stop the screaming might elate them and make them leave, and then... Well, you could avoid all of this. But... As I can understand the situation, you have gone on to your liege, and this has now been an official complaint or grievance. And I respect that. I respect that quite a bit. But I will take these demands, and... Hmm. Now comes the troubling bit, though. Well, not troubling. The... The red tape, the uh, uh, hoops to be jumped, I suppose. A response should be expediently delivered to your liege lord, if we are to avoid any unpleasantries. So, if we are to deliver this message in a timely manner, how do we do this? How do you propose that we facilitate a method of communication. Should she give Void Frost's fey name or his real name? Which would they likely actually know? Hmm. Since I can't remember Void Frost's actual human name because it never gets used, go with the Baron and Alexis Void Frost. There you go. No. Plans. <laughs> you can contact my liege, Baron Alexis Void Frost. A Baron? Hmm. Interesting. Alexis Void Frost. He, he notes, he, he just seems to just mellow on and like on a. A few moments. I do believe that will suffice in facilitating communication. Hopefully, it will be swift and in answer to the satisfaction of your honor and, well, your liege's honor, I suppose, will be forthcoming soon. I hope this will suffice both you and your baron. It's going to depend on whether his demands are met. If they are, it's quite so. But quite I'm afraid quite possible that any hostilities could be avoided. Quite so, but well, sadly, such decisions are not for me to make, as you understand. No, I don't suppose they are. But I am a. Mm, Concerned citizen, I suppose you could call it. I wish to do my part in un ending any potential problems before they start. Which is why I wanted to meet you here. And assure you that... Well... 
the person you well, some of the people you saw, but especially the mm. my brother you saw. He is a fairly normal standard version or it's not that bad to look at when it comes down to it. Not in my family. You've hand Randall handled it rather well, I must say. How do you try? Though, my leash did see a rather nasty side of me the next morning. Right. I really wish to commend you. Some people lose the context of their stomach. Well, he wasn't that ugly. He certainly was ugly, but... Well, there is ugly, and then there is... And he pauses. And you can see that he looks at you, but then he kind of just gets this thousand yards there for a couple of moments. And then he just... Like, gets into the smile again. And then there are monsters. And which are you? Hmm. Though I would have to question anyone who has to live off the blood of other creatures. Oh, I'm a monster in more than one way, but. If you could ask for something, or hope for something, I would pray that someone like you would never have to see what I look like. Hmm. It has been very, very wonderful to meet you again. I hope this will not be the last time. Might I get your number if we are to communicate again? She will uh, set a business card down on the table. Hmm. It, it's got, you know, her Instagram and whatnot on it as well as her phone number. He takes it, puts it uh, in his wallet, or in his coat pocket. Hmm. Very good. You are different, but I suppose you are spared for doing what I have to do. That is <laughs> true. It has been a surprisingly pleasant evening. The world is full of wonders, sometimes. But I'm afraid I have people to meet and <laughs> demands to pass on. Please. Uh, hopefully we will meet again under as good circumstances as this. And I very much look forward to it. But for now I must bid you adieu. You have a good evening. She will uh, stand up kind of straighten her dress hmm. a little bit and then uh, head off hmm. heels clicking on the floor and Theodore will once again hit into what you think is probably the the back of this place and <coughs> on that note we shall end our scene thank you ladies and gentlemen for playing thank you for watching this has been another scene of Batman in Dublin Oh, that's deep.